everyone, I'm Sarah of Verge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the happy socks. Now these socks are an easy sock to work as far as sock go, socks go. Uh, they're worked in a single crochet stitch and worked. Uh, the heel is made using the heel flap method which is the one I prefer and they're worked from the cuff down to the toe. For this project today I'm going to be using a little bit of a sock yarn which is by Fleece and Harmony. Uh, they have some beautiful organic uh, naturally and minimally processed yarns and they're hand dyed so they come in a variety of colors. So I'm going to be using one skein of their point prim sock yarn for the small sock size which I'll be working in the video today. If you would like a larger size, so the small size is a women's 5-6, there's also instructions for a women's medium which is a size 7 or 8 and a larger size which is a 9 or 10. So today in the video I'm going to be working the smaller size. You'll only need one skein of the sock yarn and there's about 400 yards in this skein. For the larger sizes you're going to need a little bit more, probably about one and a quarter for the medium size and one and a half for the large. You're also going to need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and I'll put links to both of these items along with a link to the free written pattern on my blog at ridgetexturescrochet.com in the description of this video. So these are the happy socks. You can adjust the size. You can also, I've made them about a mid calf height, but you can make the cuff of your sock longer or shorter depending on what you would like. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, one more note. Once you uh, come down to the heel and the toe of the sock, you're also going to need a couple of stitch markers actually up for the top as well. So you'll want two to three stitch markers as well as your hook and your yarn. I'm so glad that you've joined me. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. There are a couple other sock crochet patterns here on my YouTube channel and on richtexturescrochet.com and I'd love to hear your thoughts if you get the chance to try them out. So to begin our sock we're going to begin by working up at the cuff and the first part of the cuff is worked in rows so taking your sock yarn and I'll mention that because these are worked in the thinner sock yarn they are a great everyday sock to wear. So you're going to start by making your slip knot and then by working a foundation chain and you're going to start by chaining six. And again I'm working the smallest size and the instructions for the larger sizes and the small size are found on my blog. Once you've chained six, I like to work into the back bump of my chain and you're going to slip stitch into that second stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. You should have five stitches at the end of your row. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. Now working in the back loop only. So when looking at the top of your stitch, that's the loop or the horizontal bar that's furthest away from you. Working under that loop only, slip stitch in the first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. Once again you'll have five slip stitches. 
At the end of your row, chain one and turn your work. You're now going to repeat that row two, so working in the back loop only, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn your work. You're going to repeat that row two uh, until your work from the beginning measures approximately six inches and that's not stretched. So work it until it's about six inches and then meet me back here. Once you have worked your six inches of cuff and that's not stretched so when you stretch it it's going to uh, be quite a bit larger. We're going to work a seam down the side so what we're going to do is just fold it so that your two shorter ends meet You've chained one and now working in the back loop only through both thicknesses you're going to work a slip stitch all the way across. So just work in the back loop only of both sides. Once you come all the way across, turn your work so that it's right side out. Do not fasten off. We're going to continue working our cuff. Chain one. For this first round, we're now going to work in rounds. For this first round, you're going to work 45 single crochet stitches all the way around. So if it helps, place a stitch marker about halfway around and you want to work half of your stitches and then the other half of your stitches around the other side. But you want to work them evenly. When I'm working into my cuff, I'm just bringing my hook down a couple strands and working right into the fabric. I'm going to also work over top of my little tail here. So I'm just inserting my hook wherever it feels comfortable and trying to make sure that I'm working these stitches evenly all the way around. Sometimes I'm placing them on the top of these little ridges, sometimes in between. So go ahead work 45 single crochet stitches and then meet me back here. Once you've worked your 45 stitches around, you're not going to join, so do not join. We're going to work continuous rounds, so for round two, simply single crochet into that first stitch you may need to pull it a little bit tighter you don't want to have a gap. So single crochet then take your stitch marker and simply mark that first stitch. You're then going to work single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around and continue working these continuous rounds so do not join at the end you're just working around uh, continue working them until you've worked a total of 36 rounds of single crochet stitches. As you are working, every time you come back to that first stitch, work in the first stitch and then mark it with your stitch marker. So work a total of 36 rounds of continuous single crochet stitches and then meet me back here. Once you have worked 36 rounds for your sock cuff and just for reference it measures about six and a quarter inches from start to finish. You're then ready to start to work the heel. Now the heel of our sock is worked using a heel flap method which I'm going to demonstrate to you. At this time you can remove your stitch marker and set it aside. You won't need it for this part as the heel of the sock is worked in rows. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to work 20 single crochet stitches across. So work 20 single crochet. There's one. There's five. Ten. And fifteen. And twenty. Once you've worked 20 single crochet stitches, leaving the remaining stitches unworked, chain one and turn. You are now going to work nine more rows of 20 single crochet stitches. Your chain one does not count as a stitch, so single crochet into that first stitch and end each of the next 19 stitches so you'll have a total of 20 there's 10 and 20. Once you have your 20 single crochets, chain one and turn your work. So continue working rows of single crochet stitches in each of these 20 stitches across until you have a total of 10 rows of single crochet stitches. At the end of row 10, chain 1 and turn your work. We're now going to do a little bit of heel shaping. Now for row 1 of the heel shaping, you're going to work a single crochet stitch into the first stitch and then each of the next 11 stitches. So a total of 12 stitches then turn leaving the remaining stitches unworked so there's one two three five ten eleven and 12. So then turn your work. You don't need to chain one, just turn, leaving the rest of those stitches unworked. You're then going to single crochet into each of the first four stitches. then turn leaving the remaining stitches unworked. For row three of the heel shaping you've turned your work I'm going to single crochet into each of the next four stitches.
Next, single crochet into the next stitch two rows below. So this is going to be the same stitch as joining. So you have your row and then you have uh, down here on this bottom row, two rows below, single crochet into that next stitch and then slip stitch into the next and turn your work. For row four you're going to skip the slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Once you've single crocheted in each of the next five stitches, you're going to single crochet into the next stitch down on your heel flap, which is the same as joining, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row five, skip the next slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. For row six, turn your work, skip the first slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap, which is the same as joining, and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row seven, skip the next slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap, which is the same as joining, making sure now that you're pulling it fairly tight because you don't want any gaps, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row eight, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next nine stitches, Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap, which is the same as joining, and slip stitch into the next stitch. You should now see the shape of your heel coming out quite nicely. For row nine, turn your work, skip the first slip stitch, and single crochet into each of the next ten stitches.
single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next. Turn your work for row 10, skip the first slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row 11, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 12 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row 12, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 13 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. For row 13, turn your work, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row 14, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 15 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row 15, skip the slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches.
single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row 16, skip the slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 17 stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. For row 17, turn your work, skip the first slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next 18 stitches. single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next. Turn your work. For row 18 you're going to skip that first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 19 stitches That's five, ten, fifteen. and 19. Single crochet into the next stitch on your heel flap and slip stitch into the next stitch. Turn your work and that brings you to the end of your heel shaping. At the end of row 18 of your heel shaping. This is what your work should look like from the beginning. You are then ready to work the foot of your sock which is going to be again worked in rounds. So you'll start by turning your work. You want the right side of your fabric facing For round one of the foot, you're going to skip that first slip stitch and then single crochet in each of the next 20 stitches, so across your heel.
once you come across your heel, you're then going to have this rough uh, unfinished edge. So you're going to work even single crochet stitches down and you will work a total of eight. So you just want to work them evenly down the side, leaving a little space down here at the bottom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's a little bit of space left down at the bottom. You're then going to work a single crochet three together, inserting your hook into the next space on your heel flap, into the next stitch on your cuff, which is that same stitch as joining, and then into the next stitch. So to work our single crochet three together, insert your hook into the next space on the heel flap, yarn over and draw up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch on your sock cuff, which is the same as joining, yarn over, draw up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch on the heel cuff, yarn over, draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook and you'll want to make sure that this stitch is fairly tight. You're going to yarn over and draw through all four loops. Again, make sure it's fairly tight. You don't want any gaps here. You're then going to single crochet on the cuff uh, in each of the next 23 stitches. That's five, ten, fifteen. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. You're then going to work a single crochet three together, working in the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, Insert your hook into the next stitch, which is the same stitch where your heel flap joins with the cuff. Yarn over, draw up a loop, and then insert your hook on the heel flap just naturally where it falls into the next space. Four loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all four. You're then at the next rough side here. You're going to evenly work eight single crochet stitches up the side of your heel flap. Once you come up the side, you'll be back at your first stitch. You're not going to join that stitch, but we're going to begin again working continuous rounds. So for round two of your foot, single crochet into that first stitch, pull it a little bit tighter if you need to, and then mark that first stitch. You're then going to continue working across, working a single crochet into each of the next 26 stitches. So you'll have 27 in total. Ten. 
10. Twenty my total for twenty seven. You're then going to work a single crochet three together over the next three stitches. Now working along your cuff once again, you're going to single crochet into each of the next 21 stitches. That's 10. Twenty and 21. Then single crochet three together. Again pull these single crochet three together stitches fairly tight. And then single crochet into each of the next seven stitches up the side of your heel. round three of your foot. You're going to single crochet into each of the next 26 stitches. Then single crochet three together. Single crochet in each of the next 19 stitches.
single crochet three stitches together and then once again working up the side of your heel single crochet in each of the next six stitches for round four of the foot single crochet in each of the next 25 stitches single crochet three stitches together then single crochet in each of the next 17 stitches single crochet three stitches together and then single crochet in each of the next five stitches up the side of your heel Now we only have one more decrease round here for our foot for the small size. So for round five, you're going to single crochet in each of the next 24 stitches.
then single crochet over the next three, uh, single crochet three together over the next three stitches. Single crochet in each of the next 15 stitches. single crochet, three stitches together, and then single crochet in each of the next four stitches up the side of your heel. So for your small size that brings you to the end of the decrease rounds to complete the shaping, you're now going to work 34 rounds of continuous single crochet stitches. So for this round you should have a total of 45 stitches around this opening. You're going to work a total of 34 rounds of single crochet stitches to bring out your foot and then meet me back here for the toe shaping. Once you have worked to round 34, this is what your sock is going to look like from the heel to up to the toe that we've worked. And we have our cuff up top here. What you're going to do after round 34 is begin to work decrease rounds that are going to close in the top of our sock. So to begin you can remove your hook, your yarn is still attached, and you're going to place the sock so that it is uh, sold down on the ground. You want to kind of flatten it out as though someone was wearing the sock. So this is my bottom heel when I place it down on the table. This is what it looks like and it's nice and flat. You're then going to remove your stitch marker and go over to each edge and you want to place a stitch marker in each corner stitch here. So there's one here, grab another stitch marker, bring it over and place it in here. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be fairly even, have the same number of stitches on the top and bottom, almost in between. Okay. Once you've done that, you can place your yarn back on your hook, and you're going to start working decrease rounds. To work your decrease rounds, you're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way up to the next stitch marker. These are continuous rounds again. You're not worrying about joining anywhere. So you're just working up to your first stitch marker. When you come to a stitch marker, either of the two, you're going to work a single crochet two together. So you can br briefly remove that stitch marker, work a single crochet two together by inserting your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three, then replace your stitch marker. You're then going to continue to work single crochet stitches all the way across to your next stitch marker. And 
I'm about halfway across this other side. Keep going until you hit that next stitch marker. When you come to the next stitch marker, again, you are going to briefly remove it. Work a single crochet two together over the next two stitches and then replace the stitch marker. That is how you work your decrease rounds. You're going to continue working in this way, so single crochet in each stitch all the way to the next stitch marker, then single crochet two together, single crochet in each stitch to the next stitch marker, and single crochet two together. You're going to do that until you have 29 stitches remaining. At that point, you can meet me back here and we will sew the toe of our sock closed. Once you have worked until you have a total of 29 stitches remaining, this is what your toe looks like. There's still a little bit of an opening here, uh, but that's okay because we don't want our to well, toe to be too, too pointed. So what you're going to do then is fasten off and when you fasten off leave a little bit of a long tail. You really want several inches. Pull that through. You can remove your stitch markers. Next turn your sock so that it is inside out. And then once again, flatten it out so that you have your two decrease rounds or two decrease stitches here on the side. Taking a yarn needle. Just thread your long tail through and sew a quick seam across the end of your sock. I'm just going under both loops of both thicknesses and you're going to work it all the way across. all the way across the toe of your sock. When you come across to the other side, you're going to want to secure it. And probably with a little bit of a knot, just so it doesn't pull through, and then just tuck in that end. And fasten off. You can then turn your sock again right side out. You may wish to block the sock to get the shape a little bit more perfect as it does twist when you're working in your continuous rounds. But other than that, your first happy sock is complete. So you'll go ahead and repeat all of those steps once again for your second sock. 
and then you can proudly wear them around. And that's all there is to making your happy socks. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that are here on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.